When the new Mac Mini came out in October, it made a lot of buzz because Apple packed in much better hardware than anyone was expecting. The RAM is once again user upgradable, even though it's not easy. It has a very impressive 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports, the option for 10 gigabit ethernet, and up to a 6 core i7 processor. It was basically a Mac Mini Pro. The 6 core i7 CPU outperformed any iMac back then, since they were limited to 4 cores. And with the promise of optimized eGPU support with Mojave's new preferred eGPU feature, it was a fantastic value. And we'd still recommend everyone to get the $1,100 Mac Mini over the $800 model because you get the 6-core CPU and a 256GB SSD, which is the least we'd recommend on any computer. And now that it's getting close to a year later, has the Mac Mini lived up to the potential we first saw in it? No and I'll tell you exactly why in just a minute. There are a couple of things that are really special about the Mac Mini, and the biggest thing is the extensive variety of I.O. With four Thunderbolt 3 ports, two USB 3 ports, the option of 10 gigabit ethernet, and HDMI. You literally cannot get this much I.O. on any other Mac except for the $5,000 iMac Pro. It even allows you to swap out the RAM yourself and save about $550 on a 64 gigabyte kit compared to Apple's $1,000 64GB RAM upgrade by using the link in the video description below. The Mac Mini packs a ton of performance for the compact size, and the most important thing is that it runs macOS and will continue to get macOS updates for free for years to come. And because of the compact size, you're definitely not getting the full performance out of the 6-core CPU because it does throttle down a bit compared to its potential in a machine with better cooling, but it still performs very well. The only major downside of the Mac Mini is that it doesn't pack a dedicated graphics chip, but that may not be a bad thing if you're someone like a photographer or a programmer who literally doesn't need any extra graphics performance at all. But if you're looking to do some video editing or 3D animation work, you're definitely going to want to hook up an eGPU. We recommend the Razer Core X eGPU enclosure with a Vegas 64 graphics card for around $700, but you can definitely buy an RX 580 instead and bring that down to around $500. In our previous testing from a few months ago, we noticed that it shot graphics performance through the roof, so it seems like an awesome deal for a very capable machine. We recently got a new video editor in our office, and she's been using a Mac Mini that we got in as a loaner for a video as a temporary editing setup because we already have everything we need for it, including a 4K monitor, a wireless mouse, an old Apple keyboard, and an eGPU that we used for previous videos. However, even though we already have everything we need to make this Mac Mini shine, we'll be sending it back and won't be getting another one for long-term use. Here's why. The iMac has just been updated for 2019, and even the 21.5-inch 4K iMacs now come with the same 6-core processors, and you can even get 8-core i9 processors on the MacBook Pros and 5K iMacs. And while it may seem like the Mac Mini is a much better deal, now that the iMacs have been updated, everything that's bundled in for that price makes it a much better value than the Mac Mini, even if you have to spend a little bit more cash. First off, the Mac Mini comes with nothing. No mouse, no keyboard, and no display, while the iMac comes with all of that. That's $100 for the keyboard, $79 for the mouse, and the best part is the 5K display, which is one of the best displays you can find on the market featuring incredible color accuracy, brightness, and super sharp resolution. The standalone LG version of that display was priced at $1,300, so if you add all of that up, the iMac is a much better deal, and it comes with a dedicated graphics card. The problem with getting an eGPU on the Mac Mini is that you lose a lot of performance efficiency because the data has to go through the Thunderbolt 3 cable, so a much more powerful Vega 64 graphics card ends up not being that much faster than the Radeon Pro 580X in the 5K iMac. Now of course, if you don't need graphics performance, the Mac Mini starts to make a lot of sense, but if you're a photographer who's going to buy a very color accurate 4K display for a few hundred dollars, it actually makes more sense to just pay $500 more to get a very color accurate P3 display, mouse, keyboard, and 560X graphics, which is what comes in the $2800 MacBook Pro. Now if you're looking for a bit more performance than that, you can get the i7 6-core processor, 512GB of SSD, and if you already have your own mouse, keyboard, and monitor, you'll spend $2,000 if you get an eGPU with the RX 580 graphics. And for just $400 more, you can get the top-end 5K iMac, which comes with the peripherals, much better graphics performance due to it being more efficient inside the machine, easy access to RAM with double the RAM slots, and of course, that gorgeous and color-accurate 5K display. And even if you spend more and get the Vega 64 graphics card in the eGPU, 
In many cases, the 580X graphics in the iMac will perform just as well or even better and you don't need to have a large and loud box sitting on your desk. Now if Apple upgraded the Mac Mini with an 8-core processor, or if eGPU performance was better, it would make a lot more sense. But at this time, we would honestly suggest almost everyone to just save up a bit more cash and go for the new iMac. The experience will be much better and you'll get more performance for the cash. Now we told you that there are a few cases where the Mac Mini still makes a lot of sense. The biggest one is if you are using it as a server or in other cases that you don't need to display most of the time, just a nice and small computer. The Mac Mini would be a perfect option for this. The second is if you really need more than two Thunderbolt 3 ports, which you can't get on the new iMac, except for the iMac Pro. And along with that, if you need 10 gigabit ethernet and you don't want to use up one of your Thunderbolt 3 ports for an adapter, it's only a $100 option on the Mac Mini. And lastly, the Mac Mini makes sense if you don't need a good graphics card, save for photo editing or coding, and you already have a display and peripherals that you want to use. For most people though, even in this scenario, we would highly suggest giving the 4K or 5K iMac a shot. It's seriously amazing once you try it. We've been using the 5K iMac for years, and we can't go back to an average 4K monitor. The Mac Mini isn't a bad machine by any means, and it still has some good uses, but almost a year later, it doesn't offer the same value that it had at launch. The processors are no longer special, considering that the new MacBook Pro and 5K iMac now offer 8-core CPUs and eGPU performance is nowhere near where we thought it'd be. We really hope that Apple won't forget about this tiny powerhouse and will keep updating it with new processors and better cooling. But for now, we think most people will have a much better experience with an iMac. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to tap that like button, click the circle above to subscribe, and check out one of those two videos right there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.